as you start to read uh, scientific journal articles, you'll probably find pretty quickly that uh, that a lot of them have a similar structure. A lot of them have the same sections. There's certain characteristic parts of research papers uh, that are often the same. Uh, you know, the papers are divided into the same parts, uh, you know, from one paper to the next. So in the, that's what I want to talk about here. I want to tell, tell you about uh, the different parts of a research, parts of a research paper and what those parts are for, what the main characteristic uh, of each one is. Uh, this will be somewhat different depending on the topic. So if we're talking about, uh, if we're talking about medicine uh, in medical research versus psychology, um, and in particular from, you know, from one journal to the next, uh, the format may be a little, little different. Each journal has its own particular requirements for the format and for what should be included or, or not uh, in, the, in the paper. Um, in this case, we're going to talk specifically about APA style, APA style research papers. Uh, APA, of course, standing for the American Psychological Association. So you should have, in addition to your textbook for this class, you should also have uh, a copy of the publication manual pub put, that's put out by the APA. And uh, I, most of what I'm going to talk about you can also find uh, in the publication manual, I think, uh, the bulk of it starts, uh, kind of the core content that I'm going to talk about here starts on page, I think it's page 23. And I'm, I'm not going to go into nearly as much detail as they do in the, in the publication manual. A lot, some of that detail is very useful, uh, not necessarily at this stage, but certainly when you go to write your own research paper, there is a lot of useful detail in, in this section of the book. Uh, but when you're first starting out, I think it's actually kind of gets in the way to be looking at that much detail. So that's why I want to show you in this video the main purpose of each section and the main things that you'll notice about each one as you're reading these papers. So the first thing is not so much a section. Uh, I just want to talk about the title of a research paper. Uh, if you're looking at the title of something else, like a magazine article or in particular the title of a book, uh, the title may or may not really describe what the what the book is about. In the case of a of a research paper, the title should describe uh, what the what the study is about. So it should really be a very brief summary. You can think of it as a, a brief summary. You're summarizing uh, the main idea of the study. And I'll give you an example of this. So here's the, the title of, uh, of a real paper that you can go out there and you can find uh, in one of the databases. Um, and uh, this also, by the way, satisfies another uh, recommendation that's given in the publication manual that I thought was quite amusing, which was they say, summarize the main idea. They say, if possible, summarize it, if possible, with style. But you can see here, uh, the part that's important is this, this description of what the study is doing. Effects of restrictive eating norms on consumption among friends. That's not necessarily the most gripping title, but it's very descriptive in terms of telling you what the study actually did. Uh, it is only one sentence, so there's a, certainly a limitation to what they can tell you but it is far more descriptive than you might normally expect from a title. So when you do your research paper, you are also going to want to create a very descriptive title like this. Um, and the challenge is to encompass the main idea of the paper without making it uh, any longer than it has to be because these titles already tend to get very long and verbose and complicated sounding. So coming up with a good title is actually quite challenging. Uh, some other things to notice about this is that usually, you know, I mentioned in a previous video that most studies are looking at, uh, whatever they are, most studies are looking at variables. And let me grab a different color. Most studies are looking at variables and they're also looking at relationships between variables. And you can see that here. You can see that we have 
uh, let's see, is restrictive eating norms is one of their variables, right? That's one variable. And another one is consumption among friends. And we don't know the details of exactly exactly what these variables are, but these are definitely the two main variables that they were looking at in the study. And the other thing that they're telling us here is they're telling us something about the type of relationship that they were investigating. So uh, we'll get into this more later in the class, but this word right here, effects, when they say effects of restrictive eating norms on consumption among friends, what they're saying is that, that this first variable had some kind of effect on the second one. That means they did a, uh, a study where they were looking to see what changes one variable would cause in another, which is very different from just looking at uh, is there some kind of relationship. They're looking for a very specific type of relationship a causal relationship. We'll get into talking about different kinds of relationships more later on, but I just want to point out that a very common approach to take with a, with a title is to think about what are the main variables that I'm studying and what kind of relationship am I, I trying to show between them. Um, and depending on what the kind of relationship is, you'll use different words or possibly just omit any particular descriptive words if it can kind of be assumed from the context. That may not be clear exactly what I mean by that, but we'll get into those different kinds of relationships, like I said later on. I just right now want to show you that that is a common approach with the title, and also just to give you an example of how, how descriptive the title can be.